Church. Welcome to tonight's Bible study here in the month of September. I'm excited about tonight's Bible study. Yes, you may remember the 3rd of September or the 21st of September, but today we will talk about how we will remember the Lord's faithfulness even in our most frightful moments. But before we get into Bible study, man, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll dive into it. Father God, thank you for tonight, this moment that we can come together as friends and family to dive into your word, to unpack your scriptures, to understand greater your love for us. Tonight, as we study the scriptures, help us to see you more, learn how to love you more, see how you want us to walk the path that you set before us. Bless us this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. We all said amen. Man, listen, I want to give you these announcements also before we get into tonight's Bible study. Let you know that next Sunday, this Sunday coming up, September the 15th, is Back to Church Sunday. Invite a friend, invite a cousin, invite an enemy, whoever, but tell them that we would love to have them at the Fountain of Praise this Sunday. Two dynamic services, the 8 and 10 o'clock. Listen, it's called Back to the Future, and um, we've got so many things planned, so I definitely want you to hang out with us this third Sunday at the Fountain of Praise. Fourth Sunday, we'll be back here at Fountain Life Center, and fifth Sunday, which is the last Sunday of the month, we will be at the uh, the main campus for combined worship. And I, we got some stuff planned. I can't get it all away now, but listen, there's going to be some special guests and some good times, a dynamic word. So definitely join us this Sunday for Back to Church Sunday at the Hillcroft campus, and then we'll see you fourth Sunday here for worship service. Um, all right, let's 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 get into this this thing. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. September 22nd is Reading Rocks. Uh, we're going to be doing a big reading program, talking about reading, giving away books, giving away snacks. That's the fourth Sunday at The Rock. All right, all right, all right. Enough announcements. Let's dive into tonight's word. Now, we're doing something different in the way we do Bible study. Is I'm going to teach a little bit, but then I brought some friends with me who are going to supplement tonight's message with a little bit of dialogue on how we can further unpack tonight's scripture. Our scripture tonight is coming from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 14. Well, here's the backstory. Moses, you know, the one who was, whose name means to be called out, he was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt and away from Pharaoh's grasp. This is Exodus chapter 14. What happens is Moses has done the things. Remember, he had the rod in his hand and he, he did all the things with the frogs and the locusts and the, 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 the water that was turned to blood. He did all these things. And Pharaoh, and, and then of course, there was the, uh, the death angel that came over where we get Passover. Bible says that the children of Israel, they leave Egypt and Moses leading them out of Pharaoh's grasp. And just as they are outside of the gates, just as they've gotten away, the Bible says that Pharaoh realizes that the servants, the ones who were doing all of his work, were gone. And, and then obviously Pharaoh gets upset at the fact that these children of Israel have left his grasp. They've left his power. They've left his dominance. And he's thinking, oh, no. Now I've got to do all the stuff that my servants were doing. The Bible says that Moses' people, or Moses, not Moses, but Pharaoh gets angry, indignant, just downright upset that these people are gone. If you go back and read the story in Exodus 14, he says he gathers the chariots and he gathers his warriors. He gathers all of these things to go and chase the children of Israel. The Bible even says that they were so mad when they left the Pharaoh's place that they were riding with their fists in the air. Can you imagine that? They're like, we're coming to get you. Children of Israel are running away. Finally, the children of Israel are stuck here at this shoreline. And Pharaoh's people are right up about to get to them. Pharaoh's people are, 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 are coming to get the children of Israel. The children of Israel, they turn to Moses and they're upset now at Moses saying, Moses, why would you bring us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? Isn't it not better that we served Pharaoh and we served in Egypt than to die here? He said, were there not enough graves in Egypt? Why would you bring us out of Pharaoh's hand to die here in the wilderness? And our scripture verse today, Exodus 14 Verse 14 says, that, or we'll start at 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Verse 14, here's what it says. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. I, I like those two verses because I think someone needs to hear and even see today that you should not be caught up in the one good thing that someone has done and miss the 99 bad things that they've done. 
I think we get messed up in our toxic relationships and our toxic friendships or even our, our toxic, uh, um, uh, I don't know, activities that we get into because we have one good moment that we think that it will dismiss the 99 bad moments. They, this friend that is always dismissive to you, doesn't answer the phone when you call, and, and when you see them in the hallways, they got nothing to say to you, but then when they need something for you, they show up and they're like, oh, my best friend. Don't, don't allow them to be that one good thing, and then you dismiss the 99 bad things where you're like, I wish they were there. Or maybe that boyfriend or that girlfriend that they'll do one thing nice for you, but then they're rude to you all the other times. See, what happened was these, 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 these children of Israel yeah, a, a Pharaoh may have fed them, but he was cruel and harsh to them. And they said, well, at least we had food. But do you not realize you were also being beaten? Do you also realize you were being starved? Do you also realize you were made to work with insufficient tools? And here the, the children of Israel said, but it was better that we had to fight for that than to fight for this. Friend, won't you understand that God is fighting for you? And even though he's fighting for you, that doesn't mean that it won't be a fight at all. Here's exactly what he says. There's at the shoreline and in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, Moses tell the people, he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I like that moment right there because I think what happens more often than not in our lives is we find ourselves chasing any and everything, trying to find peace. I've told you this before, that there are no uh, uh, temporary solutions will never give you a permanent answer. We're running to different things, trying to find a solution to our pain. It, it may be something we've ingested. It may be relationships. It may be uh, negative things that we should not be doing with our bodies. And all we're trying to do is find something to make us feel better. And although it may make us feel better, it's momentary. The only thing that can give us a true peace, to give us a true joy, is Jesus Christ. And so Moses is having this conversation with these people that would prefer to go back to their pain than the promise of Jesus Christ or the promise of God. They say, we would rather die in Egypt than to die here in the shoreline. Moses says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And many of you are fighting battles that God said, I can fight for you. And he tells them in Exodus chapter 14, here's what he says. The Lord will fight for you and you Understand that just as much as God has a job, so do you. He says, you shall hold your peace. How do we hold our peace? How do we hold on to the fact that even though we're not fighting, God is fighting for us? How do we stand still? And despite the, no, despite the fact that we know that there are things trying to take us out, how do we stay in the game when life is trying to end us? It's holding on to God. It's, it's this it's the Bible says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, submit your request to God. And it says in the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding. So guard your heart and minds. What he's telling us in this moment, Moses is telling Israel and, and I am telling you that when you feel frustrated and overwhelmed and, and uncertain of your next step, I dare you to stand still and say, God, step, step in. Just like Peter, when he was drowning in water, the Bible says he called out. He said, Lord, help me. If we would just call on Jesus, if we would call out to him, if we were to trust him in our most tumultuous times, we'll be reminded that in this world we'll have tribulations. But to take heart, God has overcome the world. I know that the world feels overwhelming to you in this moment. But please, friend, hear me when I tell you this. You don't have to worry, but you do have to hold on to God's unchanging hand. He's never left you and he never will. The story says that God shows up for them in this moment where they felt the impending fate of the Pharaoh's army to kill them. But God fights their battle. Friend, God's fighting for you, but he needs you to do something too. He needs you to hold on. Don't quit at the edge of your promised land. Now, I want to bring in some friends who are going to talk a little bit more about what does it mean to stand still? And what does it mean to allow God to fight your battle and you hold on to his unchanging hand. Let's see what they have to say. Hi, my name is Aiden. Hi, I'm Alani. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Wednesday, Wednesday Bible, Bible study. study. Today, our verse is Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight with you. You only need to be still. Okay. And how do we know when to stay still in the Lord or when to take action? I feel like God will put it in our gut, in our mind that we need to be still or we'll have a feeling that we just need to just pray, pray, pray on it. Right. And then when it's time to take action, we'll also have that same feeling, a good feeling like, 
oh, this is what I meant to do. This is my purpose. Like, that's right. What I'm yeah. What about you? Um, I agree with you. Really, one of the main things to do is really just praying and just trusting that God will always get you through the situation and that he will bring you to whatever you need, bring you whatever you need in the correct time that you need. Mm -hmm. So what does being still mean? Um, being still would mean always trusting in God and make, and believing that he will give you what you need. Yeah. I like that. I like what about that. you? I agree. Same thing that just keep praying, on, keep praying on it, make time for God, and he'll give you the answer that you need. Right. Um, in the verse, God is telling the Israelites to be still. Why do you think he is telling them to be still? I think because he wants them to trust him and have build a relationship with him rather than going into their own understanding. So that's like the biggest thing. For me. Right. How about you? Um, I think he is doing it just to show that, like just to remind them that he is God and that he will always give you what you need on time. So how can how could you apply this verse to your life? Um, you could apply this to your daily life by once again just praying and always believing in God and making sure that you're spending time with God and praying and thanking Him for what you believe in and what you need. I agree. Also, I'd say like how you said making time for Him because we might have time to do other things, but we still are feeling a certain way and not understanding why we're feeling that way. So maybe just making time for him is like the biggest. Thing. Right. Um, what might be some challenges in being still that would be pretty hard for us to overcome? Definitely, like I said, leading into our own understanding, thinking that we know what's going on or we know how to deal with things and not preying on it. So then when we do those things, we kind of fail because it's not right. It's not... We didn't ask God on how we were supposed to do this or if we were supposed to do it at all. Right. How about you? Um, some challenges might be just um, really just wanting to move forward. But if you move forward without, without, God, by, without God backing you up, then, of course, you're bound to fail. And then you'll be going to God like, why, God, why? And then he just say, you didn't listen. So are there any personal experiences you have that you connect with this verse? Um, I don't have any personal experience, but with my mom, um, during the pandemic, you know, a lot of people were being laid off from jobs. And unfortunately, my mom was one of them. So when she was looking for her, she was like, we're, go we're going to be okay because she knew that God is going to deliver us and bring us what we need. And then I asked her recently about it. I asked her, like, what? Like, how did you know we were going to be okay? And then she was like, she just knew because of past experiences. And she kept praying. And all she could do is really just pray and believe. You know? What about you? Um, I've been in a relationship where I thought that it was something that God wanted me to be with this person to heal them. But then I realized it wasn't my job to heal them. But it was my, like, I had to help him find God and learn, like, about him. But I just wanted to stay with him because I thought, like, oh, we in love. That, that's my boo for our life. Nah, 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 nah. So it was, like, I knew God was telling me, stop trying to be with someone that didn't, that I wasn't supposed to be with. So I had to pray on it. I had to make time for God and learn, understand, like, why I'm not supposed to, why I'm not supposed to. And then I, I, learned, I learned. Right. Yeah. Um, how can we support others who are trying to be still in God? Um, definitely spreading the gospel, letting other people understand how God works for how God worked for me and how it can work for them. Right. So, like spreading the gospel, even if it's like posting on TikTok about God or um, telling your friends about experiences, that's way ways to support. Right. How about you? Um, Really, like, I really agree with what you did, what you said about praying with them, because that was, that was going to be my answer, like, just praying with them and reading scriptures with them and just spending time with God with them, you know, mm -hmm. so that they would have time to, to um, build that relationship with God. 
Do you think that some kids our age might think it's uncomfortable not like to pray with their friends or what do you think? Um, yes, of course, because sometimes you don't want people in your personal business. Like it's just your time with you and God. But other times, if you if you would like to share that prayer experience with your friend, like a close friend that would that you wouldn't mind sharing your stories with, then I feel like it'd be perfectly fine. Mm, I agree. I also think that kids our age might think it's uncomfortable because they don't have an experience themselves or haven't yes. um, tried to make time for God. So they don't, they might not know like the right thing to say or like, even I know some kids at my school are in different religions. So they might not think, oh, I might come, come to him to God. I might, I want to pray for you. But they're like, I don't know because they're in a different religion. Right. Yeah. So. Thank you for joining us for this Wednesday's Bible study. I hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so what'd you think? Huh? Good. And we're going to keep doing things like this in our Bible studies. We're bringing in our teams to, to talk about the Bible study, to unpack the scripture verse a little bit more. But I want to encourage you today. If you watched and you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, listen, I think about those children of Israel who cried out to God for freedom. And then as freedom was right there, they were uncertain of the freedom that they were praying for. But thank God that he's faithful. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. And maybe today you feel like I prayed to God to show up and, and now I'm scared because I still see my circumstances, even though I know God is with me. Or maybe you don't even know God for yourself. The Bible talks about in Romans that he says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you're saved. And just as God saved the children of Israel, God wants to save you. And what he's talking about is he wants to save you from, from, uh, uh, from death. <laughs> Not that we'll never die, but a death that is a separation from him. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, in my father's house, there's many mansions. Jesus has prepared a place, but you need to know him for yourself. And it starts with a confession and belief. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life and you're wandering out in the wilderness, I want to give you this moment to say these words after me. Close your eyes and say this. Say, Father God, I'm sorry. I repent from my past. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I believe you died on the cross, rose from the dead just for me. God, I trust you. God, I love you. God, I believe in you. Help me to stand still and trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, that's, that prayer is the beginning of a peace that surpasses all understanding. But you don't have to walk this walk by yourself. We encourage you to connect with us. Hit us up at Rock TFOP or join us. We have Rock Church second and fourth Sunday here in the Fountain Life Center. I would love to see you there. God bless. Have a good night.